Jim, it's hard to believe it's been 11 years since you launched this thing. Talk to me about uh, where it was and where it is now and how proud you are of the growth. Yeah, well, just to be able to hit 12 cities now, we started out in, in Houston in one city in 2005, and now to be back playing 12 markets uh, across the country and even including Vancouver this year on the PowerShare series. It's, uh, it's something that I'm proud of, and I, I love the fact that we're able to get out and visit so many cities and see so many tennis fans around the country in such a short period of time. All the buzz, obviously, is about the Hawkeye technology calling your own yeah. lines and unlimited challenges. Uh, what are your thoughts on this development? I can't wait to cheat Andre in the first match. <laughs> I'm all over that. That's, uh, he, he's, his eyes are terrible. He's old. He's like three months older than I am, uh -huh. so I'm, I'm hoping to get a couple, sneak a couple in on him. I'm going to need him. As I turn to my right and welcome in the man you're about to cheat, what about that? Uh, you guys probably played a few matches back at the Bulletary backcourts where you called your own lines. Oh, I got a lot of experience with Jim cheating me. <laughs> a lot of it. No, uh, we, we, we've definitely given each other our share of, uh, of close calls over the years, and, and every time we had umpires on the court, he seemed to have the advantage. So... <laughs> You know, tonight is my advantage. <laughs> uh, we were talking about tennis here in Utah and, and growing up in the Intermountain section of the U.S. Yeah, you, you played quite a bit of tennis in Utah, didn't you? Yeah, I grew up uh, playing in five different states that made up the Intermountain region, which is what I had to go through in order to make nationals and played a lot here right through Utah. I mean, Provo, Ogden, Salt Lake. It was, I just remember very strongly the altitude and the adjustments, so hopefully it'll click in quickly tonight. Good luck tonight. Thank you very much. Nolze, you were there on those backcourts in uh, Bradenton. Uh, some heated matches between these two. Yeah, I was there for a lot of the wars that started way back in the day between these two great champions. Backhand up the line to hold to start, then Jim's first service game gets in that backhand and starts back in front. Well, always a compelling matchup between these two. The smooth backhand from Agassi, the powerful forehand from Courier. Oh, that shot. He's hooked into the open court, though. Catch Andre's attention, so three games on serve. Jim to the team up here at 1-2. You see their ATP history, 12 meetings, seven for Jim, including a 4-2 edge in Grand Slams. Oh. Oh. taking advantage of the conditions moving forward. See a look at his record, four majors. Two Australian, two French, over 500 match wins. <laughs> and Jim venturing forward on this tour a little more than he usually has. <laughs> and that is what we love so much about watching Andre Agassi play. The return of serve, so incredible. Trash talking between these two guys starting early. <laughs> Jim likes to describe those old days at the academy between these two and you and, and, and the other guy that it was a kill what you eat, eat what you kill, dog eat dog. These were the top two dogs, definitely. And they were fighting for position, especially with Nick Bolletieri. And Jim will admit that he felt that Andre was the chosen one with Nick, and he kind of played with a chip on his shoulder. Jim is challenging this. This isn't a, that's an atrocious challenge. Of course, they're <laughs> unlimited, so there's no repercussions, but this is uh, now double break point for Andre. Busted a string. Andre called that out. So this could be a delay before the second serve. You would think Jim would get a first, but but it actually won't matter because that was a hook from Dre. Yeah, that was a bad call from Agassi, clearly on the line. Look at Andre's gone back to his original racket, the Prince Graphite oversize racket he used when he first burst onto the scene. Been playing with the head frame for a bunch of years, but uh, he said it uh, 
as Jim erases <laughs> another breaker with the ace up the tee. Says he, he knows every string, every contour of this frame. It, it uh, feels right. Andre's pretty obsessive when it comes to his equipment. <laughs> he can notice just the slight difference in anything, especially with the racket. And to be fair, most players are as well, but if you put a blindfold over Andre and gave him a couple rackets, he'd be able to tell you exactly which racket was which based on how they play, the flexibility of the frame. A couple of doubles from Rock. Something you don't normally see from Curry. He's got a very reliable second serve. set up by this terrific return. Gets a nice mid-court forehand. Generates so much power. Great shoulder turn. Uses the hips. So great to watch him return serve. Always going forward. makes such a great point about the, the interpersonal dynamic between these two and Andre being a bit of the chosen one for Nick down at the academy. It was Jim who broke through and won the major first between them and beat Andre in that final at the 91 French. Oh, terrific backhand there from Courier. Anticipating that Agassi would try to attack the backhand side. Terrific shot. And there was a lot of vindication for Curry in that French Open final. You mentioned Agassi was the favorite going in. Can see eight majors, 60 titles, almost a thousand victories, 870 match wins. Such an impressive career. Heavy stuff off the ground from Jim, and he's got great chances to put it back even. You call your own lines and your own score, apparently. It's really a throwback. Oh, that's a terrific serve. That's a part of the game which was somewhat underrated. Agassi had a very good first serve. Quick motion. Caught the ball at the apex. Terrific kick on the second serve. Champions League on Fox Soccer Plus. Destiny Prize on the road to Berlin. The UEFA Champions League. 
on Fox Soccer Plus. Binge, 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 rest. Binge, binge, rest. <laughs> Repeat. Binge, 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 rest. Binge, binge, rest. Repeat. Five days on, two days off. The Simpsons, every week on FXX. From bizarre collections to one-of-a-kind artifacts, we reveal shocking family secrets and the true price of treasured heirlooms as Jamie Colby hosts Strange Inheritance, a new primetime original series. Weeknights, only on Fox Business Network. The WPT is about action. Drama! Big bus. Big calls. <laughs> you call me five news? Come see what it's all about on the World Poker Tour this Sunday at 8 p.m. on FSM. <laughs> Trade of breaks in our second semifinal. Brett Haber, Mark Knowles. We're at the Huntsman Center in Salt Lake City. <laughs> Side of the 1979 Final Four. That was the the Magic Bird Final Four. What an epic game that was. That this arena was rocking. Wish I was there. Would have been about eight years old. Would have been fun. <laughs> Once again, we see Kerr going to the serve and volley. Something we didn't see very often throughout his career, but smart play. Knowing the air's a little thinner here. Tough to return, tough to pass. Yeah, you know, it was about a three minute long hold for Jim to back up the break, get it to three off. Just uh, waiting in the wings, Gary Kitchen. I mean, that's a that's a big boy to get uh, ready. That's a pretty intense rub down from Gary Kitchell. Takes care of all the players, makes sure they're ready to go. amount of power Courier using that trademark forehand Agassi able to redirect with pace and gets the crowd really involved oh, was there guess right made the run and blames the gecko quizzical Oh, you can imagine how well these guys know each other's game. Been playing each other for so long. Whether it be practice matches, big match, Grand Slam finals. Sending more pictures. If you're a free range chicken, you roam free. It's what you do. If you want to save 15% or more on car insurance, you switch to Geico. It's what you do. Keep up on your favorite sport at home, at work, or on the court with Tennis Tuesday, a free digital magazine available at tennistuesday.net. Each week, you'll get the latest news, analysis, and gossip from the Pro Tour. Plus, video instruction, gear reviews, and more on any device, anywhere. Sign up now at TennisTuesday.net. The battle has begun. An evil is spreading. We must fight to save our civilization. 
fight or die. The Strain, Summer FX. I'm Alex Morgan. For 50 years, AYSO has been teaching kids how to play soccer in a fun and supportive environment. Sign up now at AYSO.org. Great soccer starts here. 4-3 on serve, getting towards the business end of the second semi. Mark was an interesting <laughs> dynamic when Jim beat Andre in that 91 French final because, yeah, now Jim's the first one of these two to win a major. Michael Chang had already broken through at the 89 French. Pete had already broken through at the 90 U.S. Open. It was the third final of a major that Andre had lost. The pressure was really starting to mount. It really did. <laughs> and to his own admission, he said he struggled with that. He was the one that was supposed to win first. Now Sampras, Curry, or Chang, they had all gotten the final glory before he had. Third. Andre lost the 90 French final to Gomez, lost the 90 U.S. Open final to Pete, and then lost that 91 French to Jim. Didn't break through until Wimbledon 92. And that opened the floodgates. On a surface that we didn't think would be his first major. I don't think he did either. He was skipping the grass for a number of years. stepping up in the court. Something I think he did as well as anybody. The return to serve takes time away from his opponent. Courier not able to set his feet. Break point chance for Agassi. Sweet to watch Andre Agassi hit the ball. Seems like it's always in the center of the racket. Barely ever miss hits a ball. So clean. With such precision. And yet, still not the best player in his house. Tough deal. and Steffi's kids are going to be great tennis players, and I'm sure they would be if they pursued it, but Jaden is a fine baseball player, and Jazz is a, a dancer. Uh, he uh, loves being a baseball and a dance dad. Agassi's talent, obviously Steffi's talent, and more importantly, her work ethic, right? Those kids are destined to do something special. Now he challenges. <laughs> A little delay there from Agassi. Wasn't worth it. I don't get the feeling there's much trust between these two champions. <laughs> it's just a healthy skepticism, we'll say. Too short. Andre strokes it away and match point. Nice aggressive play from Agassi. Had one of the best overheads I've ever seen in the men's game. So reliable. I'm not 
tell them that they don't want to embarrass you. <laughs> no, I do. Tell them. That. <laughs> I guess it's challenging to serve. At least he's honest. And Jim tells you how much he thinks it's out by. Pretty close to right. between these two unbelievable champions. Some nice chatter there at the net. Terrific stuff. So it'll be Agassi and Philippoussis in our final. Here's Dre in our post-match. All right, first things first, now that you've gotten to experience the Hawkeye technology, is it harder to call these lines than it looks from your vantage point over there? Well, the problem is, is that every time, you know, your opponent calls it out, you just don't trust them. Right. Is that every opponent or just Jim? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, probably uh, everyone, but probably more Jim. <laughs> no, you know, it's, I tell you, it's difficult. Years we played on the tour, practice sets in between matches, in between days off, and calling lines was always the most interesting part of the whole thing because we like to act like we see it perfectly, but it's a, really a bluff. How much fun is it to renew this rivalry? Because we talked before the match. You've been playing matches against Jim way back to 10, 11, 12 years old in Bradenton, Florida, where you called your own lines, and here you are doing it however many years later this is. Yeah, it's a, it's a long history. Uh, we grew up together, competed in national titles uh, as juniors, lived together at the academy when we were teenagers, you know, 13 to 16, 17, turned pro, fighting to be the best in the world, Davis Cup teammates. I mean, it's one of the great parts of being back out here is just, you know, being around people that you've been in the fire with and you, and you end up respecting at the end of the day as well. I think that's very well put. And now we look forward to the final, and we all love a contrast in styles. And here we have one of the best servers in the history of the game against the man many believe to be the best returner in the history of the game. Do you like that kind of matchup as much as we do? <laughs> uh, and no, it's, that matchup seems a lot funner in the in the sitting, you know, than it does <laughs> than it does trying to deal with uh, with with Mark's uh, power because he's definitely had it. We've had some great matches in the past, and. Obviously, that's a weapon he's counted on quite often. And, uh, you know, if you can overcome it, uh, it makes you feel good about yourself. Go get a quick breather. Congrats on the win. We'll see you in a few minutes. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. Uh, Mark DeBondre is picking the ball as quick as he was against Jim. It's going to be a fun match. Yeah, one of the best returns we've ever seen. These yeah. conditions favor him. So it'll be a very interesting match in the final. Andre and Flip coming up in our championship match.